Greetings and happy Father's Day from Kiyoki Chapel. I'm Pastor Mert Shane and uh, it's a pleasure to be with you once again. Um, just as a reminder, uh, please let us hear from you uh, with your concerns and with your joys and concerns as well as your praises so that we know what's going on in your life and in the life of the community. Also remember that uh, we want to make sure that you go to the right source, and that is epaumc.org, and look in the upper right side, and you'll see a column for giving. Once you hit that, scroll down to, you'll see a sign to donate, and then once you hit that, it will ask you to register your name and information. Um, we're hoping that some of you will donate. Uh, our funds have been running a little low lately, and so it's important for people to give uh, freely from your hearts, uh, because this ministry depends upon your gifts. So please help us as best you can. We know that uh, there are a lot of issues and concerns going on in your life and in the life of our communities, not only locally but around the world. And so we pray that God will be with us through these challenging times, uh, regardless of what we happen to face. And so let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship today. Won't you pause? Take a deep breath in and feel the love of God and exhale all those things that are holding you back. Breathe in and breathe out. Let the Spirit be a part of your life as we begin to worship together. God is a God filled with wonder and surprise. We open our minds and hearts to the surprising blessings of God. God calls us God's own, children of God's own creation. We affirm our God-given identity with gratitude and celebrate with joyful service. Let us pray. God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you remind us again and again that to follow is to struggle, to be harassed, to be misunderstood, to carry the cross, and to be willing to die to ourselves. Give us the strength to carry on, to reorganize your presence in the minds of trials and to welcome the new life that you promised to us, to all people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For our children's message today, I want you to think about some of the things that happen to you, some of the struggles, sometimes being tired, doing things that are really hard. In that time, we know that there are times that uh, we pause and find refreshment, find rest. Maybe in the people that are around us. Maybe it's in taking in some refreshment in all different kinds of ways. Well, recognize that Jesus told us that he would walk along beside us, even through the tough times. And so we depend on knowing that Jesus is with us 
even through those struggles, through those long times. And Jesus provides for us, maybe providing rest for us, maybe providing refreshments, maybe providing somebody to hold our hand and walk along us, with us as we go through those struggles. Recently, I went with one of my grandchildren, and they were afraid of what they were about to deal with. And so they asked for help. They asked me to walk along with them, to hold their hand as they began their journey. And that was refreshing for them. And so God does the same thing for us, giving us Jesus to walk along beside us, even through the hard times, through the long, challenging times. God is always with us and loves us. Let us pray. When we get stuck or worried or scared, oh God, remind us that Jesus will help us always. Amen. As we come together for our time of prayer today, I know that there are joys and concerns and things that have been given to me and we are lifting up. We lift up the family of our beloved George Shoup, who has been called home to be with God. And we give God thanks for his life. We also pray for our brother Dennis Gray, who has recently been in the hospital, but now is at home and recovering. And so we pray for him, as well as all of our sick and shut-ins, those that are on our hearts and minds, our relatives, our friends, our church members, uh, some of which we have heard from and others that we have not. And so we pray for all of them. We pray for our country, our leaders, and our world as we're dealing with a lot of unrest and question uh, and concerns. Uh, we pray for all those that are in harm's way. We pray for those that are uh, trying to help others, those first responders, those those that are out to protect us and care for us. We pray for their well-being as well. And so as these are all in our hearts and minds, let us go to God in prayer. to see the deadening in this 
and seek to be alive in your capacity for surprise. In spite of our fear, we believe that we are blessed not simply by you. We are blessed to live with you in Jesus Christ. Oh God, we have lifted before you these that are on our hearts and minds, those that have been called home to be with you, those that have been sick and shut in and afflicted. We lift up and give you thanks for those that are helping us in our times of trouble. We pray for our leaders. Give them guidance. Give them determination to help all of your people. Comfort us in knowing that you are ever present with us and with them. Bless all those that are a helping hand that walk beside us, that comfort us as parents. Guide and direct them so that they become good role models and teachers so that we can all stay safe to be a part of your beloved world. Help us to be the beloved community that you have called us to be. Guide and direct us. Strengthen us and give us your peace. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. march on till victory is won. We give you thanks for all of your tithes and offerings and your dedication to our mission within this church. And so we lift up those blessings in prayer. To your presence, dear God, we present our gifts as you have asked us to receive you, please do receive what we are offering. Indeed, please receive us again and again and again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, everyone. Our gospel lesson today is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beziba, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them, there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not 
be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul, soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your Father. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Let us pray. O God, for our fathers, who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love, we pray to the Lord. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope, and their family and friends support and console them. We pray to the Lord. For men, though without children of their own, who like fathers have nurtured and cared for us, we pray to the Lord. For fathers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families, we pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. God our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord, we pray. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts be acceptable in your sight. Bless the scripture that it might fill us with thoughts of your will as we grow and prosper each day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture today is taken from Psalm, the 86th chapter. And I will say, uh, read verses 1 through 10, and then verses 16 and 17. A prayer of David. Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, 
I lift up my soul. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there are none like you, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Grant your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. Here we have another lament, another cry for help. Think of it as a child crying in the midst of difficulties, seeking help when they are in need. You'll notice, too, that many times in the way in which these stories are read and written, it's similar to how we function in our lives, in that many times they put themselves down that they don't acknowledge their accomplishments, but simply are crying for help, knowing that God is the source. God is our helper in our time of need. And so this is another petition describing the suffering and, but the faithfulness of the servant. The psalmist invokes the heritage of the faithfulness of ancestry. We recognize the faithfulness of our ancestors, what they have been through, what they have taught us in the midst of our lives, and especially as we think about this Father's Day. What did our fathers truly teach us? Maybe some of the lessons weren't exactly like we wanted them to be, Maybe not in a timely fashion when we truly wanted them or needed them. But there were lessons there that we need to remember as they taught us. Recognize the lessons that God is continuing to teach us so that we can teach others. And that's what the psalm of prayer of David is all about. You see, he asked to be listened to and for God to respond. You'll notice this theme all throughout the Psalms or in quite a few of them. In our lives, we need to be listened to. You'll notice that it talks about uh, the poor and what we call the disadvantaged, those that are in need. They are truly in need of being listened to. In all the unrest and strife around us, the riots, they are a cry for help, a cry to be listened to, a cry for change that needs to occur so that growth and peace may come. Oh yeah, it's a struggle. And we wrestle with it on a daily basis. But we need to remember that if we don't say anything and don't do anything, how can we expect change? You see, many 
are sitting there listening to me today and thinking about, well, I'm glad that the riots are not in my neighborhood. Or that this doesn't have any impact on my life and in my community. But it does. We are all in need to listen to one another. How many of you are having conversations with loved ones, with those in your neighborhood, with those that you work with, or your friends, your family members, talking about what is really at issue? Are you belittling others in this process? Are you looking for God's surprise to say, did you reflect on this other piece? What are you looking for? What are you talking about? What needs to happen? What needs to change so that we can live in harmony with one another? You notice that in that Matthew scripture, Jesus didn't come to provide peace. He came to provide turmoil to make us think beyond ourselves. To look to God for help. Knowing that God is going to respond, our problem is we want God to do it right now. We want immediate change. We want God to listen to our cry for help and to make the change here and now. God is on God's time, not ours. And we have to remember that. We have to reflect on the time that it's going to take to solve problems. It's not overnight. How we need to sit down and discuss, how we need to continue to keep the issues before us so that we can help in that change process. How many of us are willing to do that, to work diligently? And oh yes, some of you say, well, it's somebody else's problem. It's uh, the young folks. They need to do this. They need to pick up the issue and run with it. But they too need guidance. They too need a father figure. They too need ancestors to guide them and to teach them, to explain what has already happened in the past so that they don't repeat it, but to help us all grow and prosper. We have to be patient. We have to wait on God's time. God responds with goodness, with forgiveness and compassion. That's what we want our parents to do. That's what we know that God can provide. Are we willing to do that, to be patient, to ask God for His goodness, to forgive us of our shortcomings, to forgive us of our sins, our belittling of others, our belittling of ourselves. We're asking God to be compassionate, to bless us, to love us, to surround us with that comfort, that hug of a parent, to show us the way, to walk with us, to be our guide, to support us, to give us refreshment when we fall short and strong. Today, what are you asking for? What are you willing to do to be God's servant, to be a child of God, to show that love that God has given you. Are you willing to work together for peace 
and love? Are you out to destroy others and destroy yourselves in the process? What is God calling you to do? Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks on this Father's Day. You have provided us with those that are role models for us to teach us so that we can grow and go forward. Hold our hand. Help us lead us and guide us. Show us the way of love and peace so that we might do that for others. We pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. And now go forth with the love of God so that to those to whom love is a stranger will find in you generous friends. May the love of God and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Be safe. Go forth. And peace to you. Amen.